You're listening to Ask an Economist from the Conference Board of Canada. Thank you for the great question. So basically the question goes, what are the main changes brought on by COVID-19 to the food supply chain? So COVID-19 has caused multiple shocks to the food supply chain. On the demand side, food consumption has shifted from food services like restaurants to grocery stores. And the challenge here is that the food products that are met for consumers are not packaged and moved in the same way as those met for hotels, for example, who tend to buy in bulk. So there's a need to redesign supply chains to better accommodate grocery stores as well as home delivery. But there are also some opportunities. Consumers have been trying new approaches. For example, based on local farms experience, more Canadians are now ordering food directly through producers. But we have yet to see whether these habits will be temporary or long lasting. We've also observed some shocks to the food supply. In particular, meat processors have had high infection rates in North America and other parts of the world. And this has led to the temporary shutdowns of many plants or reductions in their production capacity. And because of that, many farmers are now facing a glut of livestock. So COVID-19 may be an incentive for food factories to redesign the structure of their workplaces and even invest in automation. For example, the remote monitoring of operations could actually reduce infection rates. In Denmark, for example, there have been very few COVID-19 cases in meat processing plants, and this is in part attributed to their high level of automation. In Canada, in comparison, the food manufacturing sector has seen very little investment over the past 15 years. But if we want to improve the resiliency of the food sector to future shocks like COVID-19, investment in capital is an approach that we should explore. And in turn, this could actually help improve the sector's global competitiveness. I think it's also important to highlight the working and living conditions of workers. Even before the outbreak, many jobs in the food sector involved tough working conditions. For example, many meat processors are not structured for social distancing, and many agri-food workers live in overcrowded housing. So if we want to improve the resiliency of our food supply chain to future shocks, we'll also have to consider the health and safety of workers as a priority. <laughs>